Scott, we're going to tell you a little bit more about our, ourselves here in a second. Um, but today we're going to be spending some time walking through Abercrombie's journey and how we've kind of perused the waters for the last four years in our journey and venturing into Tableau. So when we go through this, um, before we get started, I want to kind of get a gauge of everyone that's out there, kind of where you guys are in your journey. So kind of bucket you into three different groups, and if you don't mind, let me know who's into each. So who out there within your organization, you've already embraced, you already have Tableau Server or Tableau Online? Okay, a little over half. Um, who out there is kind of just maybe has some desktop models, just tinkering with Tableau, learning a little bit more about what the tools are doing right now? Okay, and then who out here is kind of new to Tableau and trying to figure out if it's even a fit for your organization and what you've done and where, where you're going? It's okay, raise your hands proud. Oh, <laughs> wait, you are, you're not letting her raise her hand? She wouldn't want to raise her hand. Oh, okay. So, um, so when we go through this, we're kind of going to hit on all three of those buckets because we've been there, we've gone through that, those steps, and now we finally invested in server, and now we're doing great things across our organization. So when we go through our journey, we're going to kind of walk through the beginning, an idea we had as an organization, what we wanted to do. Um, do you have the clicker or do I? I? Okay. So I just want to make sure. Um, so what we did, we have a little story in the beginning, and then how we actually worked together to make that into something where we started to realize value and how we we're leveraging Tableau across the business. Then we're going to give it a little bit more information because where we're at at Abercrombie, we're not as far along the journey as most, but we're probably a lot further along than where some of you guys are today. Kind of walk you through some things that we still want to accomplish as an organization and where our red roadmap goes. And then we want to make sure we leave you with a lot of the things we've learned through this, uh, our key takeaways, and then some things that you could be doing as actions starting when you leave the conference here later this week, depending on where you're at, that can actually start to make a difference and start to leverage Tableau in a bigger way. So a little bit about Abercrombie. Who's heard of us before? Okay, so we are a vertical clothing retailer. We operate under the brands Abercrombie & Fitch, Abercrombie Kids, Hollister, and then a brand called Gilly Hicks, which is operated under the Hollister brand. Uh, we were founded in the 1800s, a long time ago, uh, Scott, you were there, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, we are headquartered in New Albany, Ohio, or right in the Columbus area of Ohio. So any Ohioans out here? OH? Okay, I got a few. Great. Um, so that's, that's who we are. We're not going to spend a ton of time there, but um, we, we target customers pretty much between younger children, six all the way up to young adults. They're around 30 within the clothing that we have. So a little bit about us. Um, once again, my name is Dan Trimmer. Um, all of my retail experience has been at Abercrombie. I've been there 11 years. Uh, we produce our own goods, market our own goods, and sell them in our own stores. Um, the organizations that I've been in at Abercrombie, I, I started in a role called allocation. So my background is all from a business perspective. When it comes to IT things, I understand a lot of what's going on there, but the technical side of, of what we've done with Tableau and Tableau Server, um, the guy with the long hair in the back, He's part of that from the IT side. Thanks, Brant, if you want to raise your hand. Um, but I've also been in merchandise planning, and that's where a lot of my roots are. Merchandise planning is kind of the role of, of buying the goods, of selecting the product, understanding where trends are, investing the company's money into the products that we think are the next big trend that's out there. Um, but now at this point in time, Scott and I are both part of a team called Enterprise Business Solutions. What we do is we really support the business through systems, process, applications, as well as reporting and analytics. So as we walk through our model, it might be a little bit different than the approach you're at, but we found a lot of success of where we are. Um, also, a little bit about myself. I didn't hear any awes. No. Uh, <laughs> um, we, had a recent, we had a recent addition to our family, just one. Uh, that is Pua right there. Um, it actually means flower in Hawaiian. She was part of a litter that all had Hawaiian names. but. Pua does do an excellent job going Pua outside, so we definitely hear that joke a lot. Um, and then I'm also a marathon participant. Uh, all right, so you can't consider walking around the conference center as being a marathon participant. You can. <laughs> I agree you can, but I actually ran in my first marathon this past Sunday. And all the walking here, my legs are still working. I actually think it's helped loosen them up, 
moving around here, but um, that was a fun experience, training for that and, and kind of crossing that off the bucket list and mm -hmm. setting new goals for myself there. So that's a little bit around me. me. All right, so my name's Scott Reichley. Um, I have a little bit different background, uh, background in consulting uh, on the IT side, um, but more as a business analyst, so still um, heavily integrated with, with the business. Um, and now at Abercrombie uh, on the, the same enterprise business solutions team under our COO, so more on the business side, um, but with an understanding of, of technology. Um, I do not run, but I ride a bike. Um, so this picture is from uh, a 100 mile bike ride for charity research uh, in Columbus, Ohio. Um, yeah, so um, we were gonna have a quick vote. We're gonna put this in a dashboard later. The, the dog picture or the cyclist picture? Which one gets <laughs> one? <laughs> All right, we're not really gonna do that. Uh, but I, I do wanna say something about Scott because as we've gone through this, um, Scott, with some of his background in IT as well as the business, I think has been a huge integral part to what we've done at Abercrombie. He's been able to take kind of the technology and Tableau, relate it back to the business, and, and accomplish a lot of the great things that we're going to talk about today. So Scott is a, a big part of that, and we're, we're glad we have him here at Abercrombie along for that ride. So um, we're going to kind of dive through a timeline. We're going to, we're going to take you through our story, where we've been, um, and kind of the steps and the learnings that we went through along that entire time. So back in 2014, we're now sitting four years ago, um, we kind of got to the point where we knew from a reporting, you know, everyone's at that stage, Excel doesn't do the trick. Um, some of the older technologies, I think we were using a lot of business objects, um, definitely tools that have been around the block for a while. Um, and really kind of got to the point where we now knew that visualization was a way to go in helping us understand our data. When we went through this, um, who in here is kind of more the IT background? What we got? A few hands, and then more from a business perspective side, I'm guessing that's the majority of the other people from that side. When we first brought this to the table, um, it was really IT looking outwardly to say, hey, there's lots of great new products that are out there, there's new visual products, there's new technology, we really should pursue this and see if we can get value out of it and bring it to the organization. So. We did a lot of that and got to the point where we evaluated tools. We looked at Tableau, we looked at multiple of the other competitors, and I think hands down involving IT and critical power users from the business that at least were good with using data, evaluated all those tools and, and landed on Tableau. That, that was by far and away the best tool for us to use. But I don't know, when it comes down to investing in tools like that, you always have to get leadership support. A and when we went through this, IT bringing the perspective to the table, it's kind of viewed as this is a cool toy, but I'm really struggling to figure out how that's gonna beat out our Excel reports, what we're doing. Where's the actual value in the business so that we can actually pay that bill to actually make investments in the future and to visualization. Um, so as we went through that, and you're gonna kinda see this theme throughout lessons learned, is that from a technology just pushing that side, you know, it sometimes can be a struggle. If one group without the right partnerships go at investing, leveraging in Tableau, looking at it from that way, um, you could fall very short because there's different objectives you need to accomplish. And where we landed is without being able to show business value, it was a bit of a struggle to actually kind of get us over a hump. And, and I'm going to kind of turn it over to Scott here for a second because what we did is you see 2014 to 2016. We have a gap there. We spent almost 18 months kind of in this limbo trying to validate through IT through these new tools that, hey, we need to invest in Tableau. I think back in 14, we were coming to the conference in similar shoes that you, some of you were saying, what do we do with this? How do we actually prove it out? So uh, Scott, if you want to take us through the next step here. Yeah, so now we had to figure out how we work together, right? How does business and IT work together to show that value to justify the investment, right? So go team. So how did we do this? Well, back in the day, we were very much an outdoor company. So we went back to our heritage, we pulled everyone around a campfire, roasted marshmallows, figured out what to do. Okay, so not really. Even though we do have a campfire or fire pit in the middle of our, our home office, um, we didn't actually do that. What we decided to do instead was pilot Tableau. So now we're gonna move into a pilot. We needed to really, with a goal, to kind of prove out how do we actually get value out of these tools. Um, so one thing we, we kind of had to do was sell ourselves on 
how do we move away from Excel? How do we move into Tableau and do something different and actually get people to buy in and want to use these tools to actually really understand, can we get value out of showing data in a completely different way than we have in the past? Um, so what we did, um, and, and part of our theme, and you know, I, I came walking in, clapping my hands, is we, we really embraced Tableau, almost kind of trying to sell it to ourselves, sell it to our organization as something that's not only fun, but can make a huge difference in the business and how decisions are made. So what we actually did is across our product teams, which includes merchandising, planning, inventory management, our visuals and stores teams, people that basically are touching the product, doing a lot of things there, we actually organized high energy rollouts. Things where our goal was really to make data fun. And to do that, what we did, and they actually talked about it a lot today on devs on stage, if you guys saw that and other different things, is, is leveraging Tableau Public to get ideas. Well, what we actually did is we leveraged Tableau Public to actually create and use a data set, modified a little bit from public, to actually create data that was something people could relate to. Now, if you guys go and you build something with sales and other KPIs within your business, you know, everyone can relate to that. You have lots of spreadsheets, you have lots of other different data sources that are out there. Um, but what we did is we tried to make mu music fun and data, leveraging Tableau Public, and we had a big theme. So we're not gonna go walking through this. We have as an example, it's out there. We modified it a little bit. Um, let users ask questions, what years they were born, uh, their favorite bands. I think our biggest disappointment through this entire rollout, we did this for about a half hour, is that Taylor Swift was not actually on this list. Um, but she could be now, if we went to it. But, but there was a big theme that we had because we wanted to embrace different ways of doing things as an organization. We made data fun, we related it to different ways that we could see data, and we had one consistent theme that we had behind it. It's gonna have to be a different man. Who actually knows David Bowie? <laughs> and here, so we, we actually took the group we, on a journey through data and we led them directly to David Bowie because that song was relative in the sense of, of making change within the organization because our goal is supporting the business, embracing new technology, really so that we could start to leverage the value was about changing. It was about looking at data in different ways. But one of the things that we also recognize through this entire journey is that we, couldn't just start throwing data on top of people. We learned in that first year and a half that IT couldn't just bring it to the table and say, hey, let's invest in Tableau in a bigger way so that we can really make this scalable and roll out across the organization. We immediately partnered with leadership, with executive sponsorship. We even took them and made them part of their presentation because we found by them buying into the information, up, down, across the organization, made this transition a lot easier and we actually brought them with us here today to kind of give some of their feedback from the pilot um, that we did back in 2016. Having been in retail for almost 15 years, I've seen many different systems rolled out with many different promises about what they're gonna do. Tableau is one of the first systems I've seen that actually delivers what it is promised. I really think it's gonna be a game changer for our business and take us to the next level in reporting and analytics. In inventory management, we're used to looking at a ton of data all the time. Um, Tableau is really going to help us in the future, though, as our inventory strategy evolves as a company and we own less and less of it. It's more important that we make smart decisions in the moment using data that's very easy to see visually. So I'm really excited about what Tableau can do for us in the future. As we embrace an omni-channel business around the world, we have to get to really complicated pieces of information quickly. Tableau allows us to dive into that information, get to the things that we need, and move on to what really matters, which is what we do next. In the first few weeks of using it, we were able to get down to that level of information for every user uh, very quickly and move on, uh, making it the most valuable tool we have at our disposal. Hollister has a very complex business, and more complex, in fact, than many of our competitors. We have multiple channels, North America, Europe, Asia, DTC, and it can be very difficult to get to the information we need by a 2 p.m. Monday selling meeting. 
This new technology really helps us get to that information quickly and dig under the covers into the complexity of our business. I personally love this tool because it's so visual and it is really screaming to you um, what you need to dig into into your business. And I, I'm really excited about what it's going to tell us about our business. I think it's going to tell us a lot new um, that we don't already know um, given how complex our business is. So, and I think I'm assuming a lot of you guys already realize that there's a lot of value in Tableau, bringing visual to the table, proving that to your organizations that are out there. Um, but with that buy-in, when we added one of our brands, Hollister, really engaged in that pilot, um, leadership was backing us the entire way. It made selling this so much easier across the board and what we did. And as they talk about, and we're gonna hit on some of the advantages that we definitely found, um, within retail, Monday's a critical milestone. We make every decision off of Monday in retail. Who in here is in retail? Would you guys agree Monday's kind of like the holy grail of retail? You gotta figure it out and, and understand exactly what's going on to set up the rest of the week and your strategy go forward. Um, so what we had done with the group is we cre created kind of reports using visualization that were answering questions that they were already used to, but with a lot more complex data, a lot more slices so that they could start to drill into it. I think at the time, Scott, I think we developed two reports. Mm -hmm. Now, at this stage of where we are, we own a handful of desktop licenses. Um, we were leveraging, really, CSV files dumped from Data Warehouse. Anyone used to that experiment with Tableau? <laughs> um, and we were manually updating data. Scott was sitting at home on Sundays doing this every single Sunday so that by Monday morning, teams could go in and we used Tableau Reader, because we didn't own a lot of licenses at the time, to open up these reports. And I think they would take two, three, four, five minutes to open in Reader. Uh, we had the entire company all packaged in from every item all the way to the total. Um, and, and what we got were reports like what we have on the right. This is kind of our, our first pass into the journey of analytics. A lot of good, bad, red, green, bubbles, um, tree diagrams, different things to try to gain proximity of what the business is doing that's out there. Um, but like I said, it was extremely manual, but versus a spreadsheet, 45 pages that teams would a lot of times work on on Sunday just so they could print out on Monday uh, to read their business was now being consolidated into one or two simple dashboards for them to use. They were hooked on saying, okay, you just made a game changer in what we're doing, that this started to kind of bring us to the point where we started to realize, yes, there is value behind bringing Tableau to Abercrombie and Fitch. Um, so a lot of those lessons learned again, um, leadership that's out there, one thing is making sure that, I think with visual analytics is that you can get really fancy with some of these things, but still with your rollouts and what you're trying to do is still trying to keep it simple in a way that the business can relate to it. They understand what the values are, what the intentions are. You don't need a, a decoder ring to kind of say, hey, this one little piece of data is trying to do 20 things for you. It's the correlations of how the data works together. Um, another thing we found enormously successful is actually all of the things that we've ever developed have been hand in hand with key business users recommending ideas of what type of things that they want to be answering within their business and actually developing reports with them on the fly. Um, through people that actually understand the tools and how to leverage them. But a big thing when we got to here is we found out using desktop and reader sucked up all Scott's time on Sunday. His kids didn't like him anymore. <laughs> well, I think they still do, uh, though, right? It's questionable. Uh, it's questionable. <laughs> he, it's since recovered, since we're now on server. I will attest to that. But it's not scalable. You can't sustain that. It was kind of an experiment and fun, but it helped us start to get over the hurdle. We still had one more thing, is really to prove out that piece to leadership. Um, and we kind of have this quote, it's captured from the video. We threw it in here from the head of merchandising that was in there for a Hollister brand, but uh, it, it's really, they started to say, holy cow, I didn't realize that these type of trends were happening in our business so fast and starting to make those decisions. So now we're like, yay, we got it, right? Let's sign up for server. Um, it still required funding, executive support, what we needed to do. So I don't know if this is unique to, to us or not, but it actually was kind of the turning point in our entire development. So a little story and something that we did is we had a meeting with our CFO at the time, she's now our COO, um, pretty much the one that writes the checks in a public organization, giving us approval to move forward with some of these investments in technology like this. Uh, we had about an hour meeting to discuss the topic. Within that meeting, we intentionally 
decided to develop a report on the fly. Now you might think with an executive leader, do, is that really the best use of their time to watch things drag in and out of a, a, a Tableau workbook that's out there? Well, we, we made sure the data was good yes. beforehand. That's always <laughs> key to anything. Um, and, and what we did is we, Scott, not we, Scott, actually developed a dashboard. I think it was about eight to 10 sheets, put in actions, put it all together in eight minutes. And I can still recall in my head, sitting there in 2016, um, our CFO saying at the end of those eight minutes, she goes, wait a second, is that this metric and this metric? Yeah, are those right? Yeah, they're right. Because she goes, in the three years she's been with the organization, that's the first time she had ever seen those two metrics together, working together as one to actually drive a business driving decision. Pretty much eight minutes after these first eight minutes, she was ready to sign the check. Um, <laughs> but it, it was something really to open the eyes of the tool. And, and whether you have leadership that's really engaged in the tools, they'll use the tools, it's, it's that buy-in piece. It's understanding the ability to dynamically build something quickly to get insight so much faster than older technologies used to support for anyone in the organization to drive and build decisions that are out there. Um, another lesson learned as we went through all this is back in 2014, we kind of had that message that it was a shiny tool that IT brought together, piloted it through the business, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a partnership. Um, it's really within your organizations, making sure that everyone is focusing on their right core competencies, that they're not trying to go outside the box because they think they're the ones that should be the, to take Tableau you know, to the finish line that's out there. You know, whether it's business users, IT, somewhere in between, it, it's making sure that you have all the right stakeholders investing into these projects with what they do best. What we found within our organization, it's IT, managing infrastructure, data, governance, user access, and then within the business teams, actually then using certified data to drive calculations, build the visuals, and do it in a way that the business can actually relate to and drive better decisions out of. Um, so Scott, I think you're gonna go through a, a couple different things of why this completely made sense. Yeah, so uh, as Dan mentioned, the desktop reader model really wasn't scalable. Um, and there were some pain points from the user experience too, right? Um, sometimes it would take you know six to 10 minutes to open one of these big workbooks um, from a network drive, so they had significant performance improvements on server. Um, the other thing is our, our business, right, goes from all three brands all the way down to graphic tops, graphic t-shirts, right? And so that person who owns graphic t-shirts always would say, well, why can't I just open it up there? Why do I have to click through the hierarchy to get down to there, right? And on server, now I can do those couple of clicks, save it, and every time I open that report, it comes up there. That was a huge win for the business teams. Um, and being able to subscribe and get those emails on Sunday afternoon so that when they're in, you know, come into the office on Monday, they have the information they need um, and then mobile devices, so we, we have people that go out and visit stores all the time, right? So for them to go into a store, pull up the report on their device, and be able to ask questions of those associates at the store um, as to what's going on to better understand what's happening in the store. And then from an enterprise perspective, that, that automated data refresh was big for me, um, because I didn't have to do it on Sunday anymore. But it, it let us scale too, right? We had two reports in the pilot. We now have 120, 150 reports that we've done, um, somewhere in that range. Um, and we can also see who's using reports. And are there some reports that people aren't using? And if they're not, why? Let's go start asking those questions. Um, the scalability piece we hit on, and then also security too, right? To make sure that when, when you have a file on a network drive, people can just go get it but on server we can set permissions and make sure that people see only the things they're supposed to see. Okay, so now we have approval, we're gonna buy server, we need to roll it out. We need to realize the value, get our payday. So how do we go about rolling out server? Really, we were trying to Get, get all those benefits that we just talked about, right, over the desktop reader model, make sure that server's out there, that people can make those decisions and, and realize value and take action. And this is where we relied heavily on IT um, to implement server. They had uh, Tableau support come in and help them as well, 
Um, but IT was really focused on all the configurations, the settings, getting the mobile app working, um, a whole provisioning process for user rights and access and all that. And at that time, we were then taking those reports we had in the pilot and making sure that they were converted to data sources that could update automatically. Um, and at this point, we really started realizing that standards were, were pretty important. Um, some things that make, might seem silly, like putting an apply button on when you have you know, a big list with a multi-select. The user doesn't like going and clicking and waiting for it to spin and then click again and then click again. Um, things like color palette, we, we saw the red, green, we switched to a blue orange since it's more, more appealing um, and red green uh, is the biggest colorblind combination. So to make the reports more accessible. Um, really lots of things like that just to make sure that the experience for the user is the same as they move from report to report, right? We wanna make it easy when we put a new report out there that it's comfortable to them and familiar and they can start using it right away. So we did another rollout, we did another uh, high energy presentation. Um, this time we didn't, didn't pull anything from public. We were really focusing on what the teams were going to get out of moving to server, showing them how to do subscriptions, how to save their views. And we also supported it through a lot of touch points with, with the business users. Um, we set up office hours where we sat you know, in a conference room and let people come in and ask us questions. Um, we have an email address that people can send us questions, suggestions, ideas. Um, we published a user guide that, that we give to all the new associates. Um, and then we're continuously updating monthly, telling people what's new out there. E either a brand new report or updates to existing reports based on their feedback. Um, and we've also sat one-on-one -on -one with our, our brand presidents, um, even our CEO for a little bit to show them at that leadership level, like here's how you get to what you, what you need so that they're using it and asking questions from those reports. Um, and we did a lot of attending team meetings, so we would go and show teams a report. You know, as one of our vice presidents of planning said, hey, this report's really cool, can you show my merchants? Can you come to our merchant meeting? So we would go and show them that report as part of their regular team meeting. So lessons learned, if you haven't figured it out yet, leadership key. Um, and, and really getting users involved and getting feedback at this point. A, a lot of ideas that we get come from the users, right? We, we can guess what they want, but they're the ones that are using the reports um, to drive their business and make decisions. So they're gonna tell us what they need for that. So how do we go about creating reports for server. Our biggest goal when we create reports is to let those business teams do what they need to do, which is make decisions. Instead of spending time pulling information or figuring out where to go to get that information, right? The reports should have given them that information right away. So to do that, we really look to understand what types of questions they're asking. We try to stay away from just taking an Excel report and putting it into Tableau, really. It's, okay, here's the Excel report you get or Crystal report or whatever. What are you doing with it? What questions are you asking? What decisions are you making from it? So that we can figure out kind of how best to visualize that and present that information to them. Um, sorry, I went ahead. And we really then go back and take a first pass. Right, and our first pass, that 80% is really um, more about the information that's available. That first pass really still needs to have, you know, the dashboard actions working, the data needs to be right, um, those types of things. And then we'll go back and show the users and refine it, and then we publish it. And when we publish it, we're not done. Because what we find a lot is as users are using that report, they're gonna realize, oh, well, here's this other question that I have, or, if I had this other piece of information, I wouldn't have to go find it somewhere else to make my decision, and it, it, I would be able to just do it right now. And so we, we go through a lot of iterative process, and a lot of what we use that email address for is for people to give us that type of feedback. So we're constantly updating the reports to make them relevant to the business. So what did we learn? It's okay to make a report available even if it's not 100% done. 
Um, in one of the office hours that we had, we were, we were showing someone a report, and we're like, oh, we're kind of tinkering with this, you know, it, it's kind of there, but we want to add a whole bunch to it. And they looked at it, and they were like, I spent two hours getting half of that information today, and I do it on Sunday. If you give that to me next week, I would love you. <laughs> so it's okay to put it all out there, uh, to put it out there before it's done, but like I said, the, the actions need to be there, the data needs to be right before you do that. And then we've hit on it, but getting that feedback and then being able to update the reports quickly. Yeah, and I was just gonna add, our, our model might not be exactly like yours, but what, where we found success is to have a, a small team really being focused on knowing the ins and outs of Tableau, developing the reports, the resources that are through that, the education, the training, you can call it a small center of excellence in a way, um, so that, as Scott said, the business teams aren't focused on everyone getting a desktop license, driving to their own thing. It's really around um, consistency, using the same data, and really making business driving decisions as opposed to exploring through data in a way. So it might be a little different than where you guys are, but that's kind of where we found success is to create a, a good solid filter where all the questions are coming through a centralized way to produce consistent results in and out so we can adhere to those standards that Scott talked about. And I think we're gonna jump into. Oh, you're right, I went ahead, sorry. We're gonna jump in now and kind of walk through some of the things that, that, that Scott's hit on in, in the different reports, some lessons that we've learned in reporting, um, different things that we've found a lot of success on that teams are now using constantly. Um, and we'll get to the stat in a little bit, but across the product teams, well over 90% of all the individuals that deal with product are now using Tableau really on a weekly basis to understand to drive their business. They're coming in on Sunday, or not on Sunday, that's Scott, that used to be Scott. Um, <laughs> They're coming in on Monday at normal hours and they've got information that they need at the disposal of their hands. So as, as we're kind of looking through this, this is um, in retail what we call a Pareto chart. Um, what, what we've done here and, and in retail and a lot of organizations, one primary measure is how is your business doing this year versus how was it doing last year? Are you getting better or worse? Where are those trends at? So what teams used to do uh, within our organization is they'd come in Monday morning early they would grab all these samples of products that they have, they'd hang them up on walls in order, they'd pull a bunch of reports to understand which one's the best product that's out there. Basically, we took that entire process, moved it into Tableau, and now teams, we've kind of um, really gotten behind Tableau in the sense that all of our major conference rooms now have 80 plus inch TVs. Teams are now interacting with data on the fly in front of each other as opposed to trying to kind of dig through things. So Scott kind of rolls through here. What this is really kind of telling us is this year, last year, um, kind of stacking both years on top of each other, three different measures, one's a circle, the other the bar in there, um, using color to really understand productivity and margin of the product, to understand some of the strategy and decisions we're making, to where the teams can now focus on, hey, what's our best item? What's it look like? What is it about that item that uh, potentially is driving the trend that we can now use to leverage in better decision making, so that next time we go to purchase new product, we already have those great things in mind. So as we look at this year, last year, within the business we're looking at, looks like the trend is in darker wash jeans as opposed to lighter wash jeans where that fell last year. So teams would leverage this to then make decisions to place product, place inventory, to react, make sure that we're supporting that business and then buying into it in the right way in the future. Anything else you wanted to add here on this one, Scott? I don't think so. I mean, I guess the only thing would be like, when people look at this, they actually see the numbers. <laughs> we dummied it up so that, you know, we know how to use tool tips. <laughs> you do, I don't. I do. Okay. Uh, so what, what the color is, um, oh. and Scott mentioned it, and what we, this is kind of one of the standards that we've gotten into, is that blue is generally a positive, orange a negative. So it's kind of your red-green color palette that you would think of. In this case, it's actually reflecting margin rate of the product, so what this would tell a business member, if it's screaming at you dark orange, it meant we had to be extremely promotional or highly mm -hmm. discounted on that product to drive the sales. The darker blue it is, is basically telling them that the product's stronger, it's actually the trend itself is truly driving the customer demand behind yeah, that. We, we took the scale off because we don't wanna show you our margin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but, but what we'll see is within those standards, these blues and these oranges, we've now adhered to that, that every single report uh, we're gonna show you one that doesn't exactly fall into that, but there's a reason. 
Um, here's another report that teams use that basically allow them to look at trend day over day, week over week, product category across the board. Similar colors, but one thing that we learned, at least in retail, is that a lot of decisions, even though visuals are cool, are still very grounded in numbers. That the right balance between numbers, between visuals, there's kind of a sweet spot in there because as leaders or individuals across the organization are speaking to their business, they're still telling a story. They still need the data behind it to understand what's working, what's not working, how big is it, and then the ability to use visuals to actually identify opportunities, outliers, exceptions within the business that can help us drive to different decision makings and then potentially even focus on when, where, why, and how it got there. Um, a lot of these reports that are out there have really been crowdsourced throughout the last year and a half in the sense of what is important for the business to use, getting it out there, and then modifying it on the fly um, quickly through server so that new information can be presented to the end users that are out there. We're going to show you one, two more here. Um, this is something that we use to evaluate stores. Um, still grounded in numbers, but in this case, we're actually using the shading of the numbers. Granted, they're not good numbers as well. Um, but using the shading up here, the coloring to actually identify heat mapping in a way of what regions, what areas across the country are, are truly driving a product trend that's out there. And then ability to drill into product that are out so we can understand customer demand, what they're looking for, what areas of the business are driving certain products because a lot of the teams that we support are trying to understand, in this case, it's female genes, where are genes being successful? So then they can then take some of the other reports that are out there to dive in to understand what is it about those genes that are actually driving the results in the business. The last one we have, it, it's got green, so not everything's got the, the orange to blue scale, but um, one theme we're getting into, so we don't support supply chain, but this visual here is developed by our supply chain team. It really is now we've tapped into a lot of data in supply chain and we're tracking the movement of our inventory from vendor, wherever that is around the world, all the way to delivery in stores and having so much better visibility to understanding, are we on time? Are there risks to delivery slides? Where does that come from? What do we need to do? How do we adapt? How do we improvise? Or are there opportunities that things are getting here earlier that we could potentially get a new trend on the floor sooner than maybe we had expected? So as we get into this, we're really starting to expand deeper into other areas of the organizations outside of just what we call the product teams that are out there um, within supply chain. So when we look at the actual value we've received to this point in time, and, and we're still quantifying this value, and there's so much more value that's untapped, but our investment in the server, where we've gotten into getting teams on board, the majority of the, our teams leveraging, using server, using these reports that now, what it's allowing to do, and, and Scott's hit on it a bunch of time, is we're now able to get to our business to make decisions, to read it, so much faster than we ever could. The automation behind it, the drillability into it, the ability to get into data that we never knew that was out there, which you know, everyone in here I think is experiencing that through data and visualizations and the amount that you can handle and process. But we've really supported that by allowing teams to reinvest their time into driving decisions as opposed to developing and gathering information to drive a decision. Um, one of the biggest things, and this is probably the biggest selling point outside of building a dashboard in eight minutes to leadership, uh, was the fact that um, when you have a data warehouse, it's self-service, anyone can get to it. Um, I don't know if anyone in, in here has been in a position where um, two people try to answer the same question and you don't get the same result. Has that ever happened it's out there? Um, that's a very consistent theme at Abercrombie, or at least it was, in a way that by leveraging the analytics, the reporting done with secure, solid data, making sure we're partnered with IT to make sure everyone has access to the right things, is we now started to build a sense of consistency and standards across the business that no matter who was asking the question, whether it was our CEO, Fran Horowitz, or an analyst, I can't think of his name, um, but speaking about a similar question within their business, and they're, they're now doing with tools that support vertically every single decision that happens in between there with a consistent response. Um, things being available, so um, one of the benefits we saw and within our organization with Monday morning being such a key critical time frame is come Monday morning you have to be prepped ready to go. Uh, teams were working a lot on Sundays. They're, they had six day weeks to basically drive their business where they were. 
Basically, we've been able to cut Sunday off their calendar and they've gotten back to a normal schedule by making reports available, using server, running them in real, um, when we need to, making sure that they're always up, supported across the board. And, and then one example where we've kind of started to take our analytics into a higher level component is we've now started to take all this data that we've got, starting to tie it more and more to customers so that we can actually make localized decisions of what customers want, when they want it, where they want it, so that we can be even smarter about what products we place in the store. Denim and a couple of our brands has already taken a lot of those actions and, and some things we've done with Tableau have actually driven some of these and um, we have a little bit more information actually on a, I think on Tableau's customer story site, kind of a little deeper dive into what we did with Denim within the organization if you ever want to check it out. So like I said, the majority of our teams changed management. We made it fun. Uh, we, we moved into Tableau, people embrace the data that's out there. Um, even though it's extremely powerful, everyone's got to get over that hump at some point and realize that it's okay to set the spreadsheets to the side, or at least the majority of them, when you can solve it through data analytics through Tableau. Um, one thing that we do, we've got a process called a line review where all teams sit down with exec executive leadership, and go over what products that we want to buy for a future season. Um, used to be that teams would spend about 40 to 50 hours uh, trying to pull data from many different sources, package it together in a workbook, PDF it so it looks pretty and everyone had consistent measures and then we could go and hand off a 20 page packet to our CEO and talk about here's what we're going to do and it's going to be great. Um, what we've been able to do is, this is an example of we've taken a standard process, moved it all into Tableau, um, really the data is there on demand for them in a format that they're looking for that now what they're doing is they're spending about four hours analyzing the data, prepping for that meeting, being more prepared than they ever were before as opposed to 40 some hours actually just trying to get ready for the meeting that was out there. So we've already seen huge success in a lot of the things we've done by, by leveraging smart different ways to bring Tableau into the equation. Here's our Sunday quote. Um, we still have some rebels that are ambitious to kind of grab their own data um, and still work on Sundays, but the teams that we support um, pretty much have abandoned Sunday because, I mean, that's why we invested in server in the first place, was to get, get them what they wanted, when they wanted. And then these numbers may not seem huge down here on the bottom. Um, the area of the organization we support represents about 20% of our corporate headquarters. Uh, it's about 450 to 500 individuals that we have on our campus. Um, however, we're the one group truly embracing Tableau, Tableau server, uh, engaged in that. And, We've actually seen as an organization as a whole, these are from that the number of ad hoc requests that are actually being pulled to our data warehouse have been reduced by 25%. Well, I can only wait until we have rolled out Tableau across the entire organization, all areas of the business, because the trends that we're seeing here and doing ad hoc, um, trying to get to your own answer have dramatically fallen off across the organization and it's so much larger in the areas that we support. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of time to value that we've really gained at a lot of these things. So with that, I'm going to turn it back to, to Scott. Is, is that Pula up there? No, it's my dog. Oh, Anyone want to change okay. their vote? <laughs> <laughs> so now where do we go, right? How do we continue this journey? Um, a lot of it is building on the success we've had already, right? We've talked about a lot of the things we've done with the team. So, so what do we do next? Um, <laughs> so we actually did create some Excel-like reports, I know. Um, but a lot of those reports were to take the time-consuming piece out of it. So that line review process that Dan talked about, or we had a lot of crystal reports, and it's tough to find crystal report developers. So we, we did build some of those reports in Tableau, and, and a lot of it was to get people used to going to Tableau, if, if anything, right? And then a lot of those reports, though, we can point them to, here's the, uh, the next report, the Tableau report that you can drill to get those answers um, you know, that you need to from that high level you know, crystal type report, Excel type report. So we didn't completely shy away from just showing numbers, um, but we did it for a reason. And the other thing that we do is, is try to tackle a lot of those tough questions. So that, like the denim example that, that Dan had, it, it's not black and white. Um, there's a lot of gray space there. So as we start to look at some of those and, and produce some analysis to teams that they're like, oh yeah, I kind of thought that was what was happening in that store, or those set of stores, they start to now trust the information and trust the analysis that you're doing because um, they're questions that they can't figure out how to necessarily go to the data warehouse to get those answers. 
And then we really start to expand to different business areas, right? As Dan said, we're really in the product facing area, um, but, but starting to expand that influence and, and get other teams on board uh, with Tableau. So yeah, so we're gonna leave you with a few quotes here that we had from the business and, and just a couple more takeaways. So one of those teams that we've recently expanded to, I'm not gonna read this whole one, um, was in our testing team where they had a process that during critical times of the business where they had to look at you know, the results of a test to understand what that meant from a trend. They would spend hours, uh, I think they come in at like four o'clock in the morning, spend six <laughs> hours pulling reports and basically took that process, improved it, and now they just come in just like the rest of them and just read the, the responses within the data. Uh, another area of the business that we've recently expanded into um, is within our wholesale business and um, kind of showing them some new things because they were a team kind of isolated on their own where they were extremely happy with what they were doing in Excel. They, they loved what they had, didn't want to migrate. It was a bit of a challenge from a change management. And I think we, there were a couple passes they saw and then we, we kind of got involved with them. Scott helped develop some things and, and we showed them a new way to look at their business trying to answer some questions. And about 10 minutes into the meeting, the quote was, this ranks up there as one of the best days of my life, just behind the birth of my first child. And, and she has two kids. Yeah, so we're not going to challenge anything there, but that's what she said. Um, so, you know, it's definitely started to make a lot of impacts on our business. Um, I'm sure it's making lots of impacts on yours, but a lot of that is just getting the momentum going. Uh, so we want to leave you with some key takeaways, just kind of recapping the different things um, that we've covered today. And, and first is about getting started. It's about knowing roles, getting the right teams together, not one team individually trying to pursue these tools because value comes from lots of different areas of your organization. I think that support through, and we've hit on it at the very bottom a lot, is, is that leadership support and making sure that teams are contributing to that full picture to get the most out of it as well. And then as we did, doesn't mean that this is the best choice for you, but it's really kind of creating a proof of concept, building a pilot to really show that value because I think without that value, it can sometimes be tough to take that next step in leveraging these tools in the right way. And then when we talk about creating reports, you know, we hit on a little bit, but it's really about understanding the questions, right? If, if you're not answering questions and allowing people to make better decisions, the report's not gonna, gonna have that value. Um, and in order to do that, you really need to understand the business and how they make decisions, right? So those reports that are created are created by people who understand the business and their decision-making process. Um, and we hit on standards a lot. Um, you know, those standards are really important for that consistency and look and feel across the reports. Um, we found that the standards aren't always like set in stone. You know, sometimes they flex a little bit, but when that happens, you know, we go back and tweak some of the existing reports because um, maybe we find you know a, a different way to have a standard there. Um, and then a big thing is making sure that dashboard actions work. Like we found that, especially a lot of our teams that maybe aren't, that we support that maybe aren't as much um, in the technology space, like they expect that when you click on something, it's gonna make everything else work how they want it to. So we spend a lot of time going sheet by sheet. You know, when I click here, how do I want each and every other sheet to react? Um, so it's really important to make sure that that's working. And then in terms of user rollout, we hit on it, you know, have fun with the data. Go out to Tableau Public and grab something to just show people data visualization, something outside of the business. Um, and get to that value quickly, right? Which is what we tried to do with the pilot. Um, and the touch points are really important to get users engaged, to get that feedback from them, to show them how to use things. Um, maybe you sit with them and they say, oh, I use this report to get this answer. And you say, well, here, you can get it over here in this Tableau report instead of this Excel report. And the other thing that we do a lot is try to understand how the, how the users use the reports. So if someone isn't able to get to what they want to or get to the answer, you know, understanding how they're using it and then being able to update that so that they can get to what they need. Yeah, and then ongoing, it's just always informing teams, keeping them in the loop on everything that you're working to. Uh, reach out to more people, create that environment um, within Tableau where everyone feels safe that they can ask any question that's out there. Um, whether that's through different ways of communication or if it's doctor sessions or different ways that you support through kind of a center of excellence, 
just know your users can ask anything that they want out there. And then um, it, it's just continuing to push yourself to do more. And that's really where we are today. So we want to leave you with four things, depending on where you are in your journey on your own. Um, but here's things that if you're trying to get over that hurdle um, that we can do. We've hit on a number of times. I mean, if you don't already have leadership support, I would say on Monday, how do you create that communication, buy in from your leadership so that they're engaged and supporting you all the way along the way so that you can get to what you want to, your goals are in the future. Um, it's really about questions that drive business action. So making sure that you're asking yourself the right question. If you're developing something or you're working with teams that are doing that, it's, it's really how do you answer the right question so that you get that value right away that's out there. Um, start as an organization, making sure you've got everyone working together. Collaborate together business and IT. We found as soon as we got to that point, you know, we started taking these opportunities exponentially faster than we could individually on our own. And then the last, it's just make it fun. I know we've already hit on a lot. Tableau, you know, we're all here because we're excited about this. You know, take that excitement that you have and cascade it down on the teams that you support, however it is, because your energy is going to transcend across the organization and your business that's in there. Um, so the last thing we have, and welcome you guys. Uh, I know Tableau, as well as ourselves, love the feedback if you can through the survey that's out there to help support um, developing content for future sessions, anything you guys can do. We appreciate all that feedback. Um, but last, we want to say is thank you. And we want to do offer up a little bit of time here in the last few minutes for any Q&A if you guys have it. I know uh, Iron Viz is starting in a little bit and everyone's got data night out. But uh, we will definitely answer any questions if you have them now or hang around afterwards as well. But we definitely appreciate everyone's attention this afternoon. Thank you.